Uh, so yeah, so let me do this. Let me, uh, let's do the YouTube content creator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this again. Let's do the YouTube content creator. What's up, everyone? Uh, it's your boy Gil here, and Feng stocks are on the rise. Uh, everyone's complaining about Feng. Whether you think he's okay, whether you think he's too strong, just strong enough, I want to help you to just deal better with him. Uh, with him. Uh, I'm not going to deny Feng is very strong. We're not. This isn't a video to downplay Feng. He has very strong options. Uh, but as most things in Tekken 7, things can be counterplayed. Things have weaknesses. What's up, everybody? Um, on YouTube, main main <laughs> here. Hope you're doing awesome. So yeah, chat. Always, and today um, we're going to talk about things here we go. The way I think this video is going to start. There we go. The the text speech finished. The way I think I want to uh, format this uh, this little lesson is just go over the basic flow charts that Feng likes to submit you to when he's on the offense and how you can deal with that. So I was going to talk about basic Feng flowcharts, right? What does Feng like to do? Well, what every character, Tekken 7 character wants to do, right, is, you know, hit your punishers, hit you with punishers, submit them to the uh, to the blender, right? That's what every Tekken 7 character wants to do. Let's go over a very basic one. A uh, very basic one is Feng's sidestep mix-up. A common sidestep mix-up you see is a launching low sweep. It's a launching low sweep and down forward three, a launching safe on block mid. That's the basic flow chart. Let's see. There's many ways. There's many ways Feng players want to do that, but you know, usually it's after they have advantage, you know, like after they hit you with a punish 1-3 or they have a successful snake dash on you, they hit you with like wall standing 1. Let's just work off a of wall standing 1 because it's point blank, it leaves Feng point blank and plus 5, you know. Let's do that. This is Feng's uh, basic but very, very common sidestep mix. Of course, he can sidestep off of any situation, but let's just say Feng has plus five frames and he's point blank. Let's try to do sidestep four as fast as possible, so I can give you guys an honest look at this. Jesus. All my execution goes out of the window when I'm trying to teach people stuff. Yeah, that was a fast sidestep four. And then... We'll do down four or three. There we go. Down four or three. So. He hits me. He hits me with. Um, while standing one, he's plus five. Okay. But the, and a lot of people are like, man. Fuck this 50-50. This 50-50 is really fucking dumb. Well, yeah. That's when you don't move. Second 7 is a movement game. You know? So many things in the game are 50-50 if you refuse to move. Or you believe you believe you can't move. So, this is all talked about in the open. Not at the wall, of course. We'll talk about wall stuff later. But just in neutral game... You know, he hits me. Oh, shit. Uh, okay, okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna eat the mix-up. Okay, I'm gonna just... Oh no, I ducked. He killed me. Okay. But here's the thing. You don't have to take this mix-up. The main reason why you don't have to take this mix-up is because sidestep 4... See, I'm hitting him right now. Sidestep 4 has a clean hit requirement. It needs to be... at a certain range pretty close to actually launch you with the sweep, you know. If he doesn't launch you with the sweep, it's 14 damage, 14 damage for a death on block low. And that doesn't give Fang any momentum, Fang's actually negative after this, if he doesn't get the launch. 
Oh yeah, yeah. No, uh, that's one of the, my favorite things about Tekken. It's just like you have so many options on defense. Mostly, you know, mostly um, movement that is just so strong. You know. Yeah. So let's do this the same thing right here. Check this. I want to get hit by wall standing one. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? I should do a back dash. Let's see. This is the basic thing you can do. I should do a back dash. You see this? He's in my face, plus five. I just do a back dash. I don't care about that low. Sometimes my back dash even makes the mid whiff. But if the mid doesn't whiff, Bang's minus seven. See this? Just, just one back dash. One back dash. Boom. Quote unquote 50 50 neutralized. Of course, this is a very basic, but against a lot of beginner players, strong flowchart. Of course, Fang can delay his timing. He can, you know, dash up. But that gets like into a lot of like mind game stuff. But this, I'm just teaching you guys how to deal with like the basic common stuff. Another way thing you can do. So you can just, you know, if you don't feel very confident, you can just do a back dash. Oh shit. You can just do a back dash. I want to make his down for a three whiff. There we go. If you don't want to take a lot of chances, just do one back dash. And then just confirm what happened. You know, if he whiffs down for a three, launch his ass. But. If you feel good about your backdash avoiding down forward 3 the mid launcher, or if you just play a character where you don't even have to worry about like doing a good backdash, you know, you play Safina or Fakumram, or characters that, you know, whatever. This works on any character. If you feel like your backdash timing is good enough to make good distance, then the next level of your defense is backdash is backdash and low block. This is if you want to go... In Tekken, usually... In Tekken, usually... You can go for a pretty safe defensive option, but it won't give you much reward. Or you can go for like a more complicated defensive op option, but it might give you more reward. The idea that I'm trying to demonstrate here is you do a big backdash. Yep. Big backdash into low block. See, the big backdash will make down forward three whiff entirely. And then, of course, the low block will give you a free launch on sidestep four. So that's the basic idea behind playing sidestep mix another common sidestep move so that's like if Feng wants to like sidestep launch you you know like sidestep four and if you look knee uh the big 
knee match, of course, is his Evo match. The entire... All of the rounds he fought against Khan... It's like nine game. All of the games he played against Khan... It was like nine or so games. He only used sidestep four once. Because against players with good movement, sidestep four is just not worth it. He has a counter hit launches, and that was the only time that knee had used sidestep four. He just felt... Like it's gonna work in counter hit. But if you can move a lot, move well, and move with purpose against Feng, and that's what we're working on in, in, in this today. Five step four will probably be something you'll barely ever see. Um but let's talk about like if he doesn't want to launch you, you know? He has while standing, uh, he has sidestep 1 plus 2, which is the palms. There we go. The palms. Plus 1 on block. Pretty chunky. Plus 1 on block. Alright, pushback. It's. Well, you know, Fang's ad advantaged. Very linear. Very linear. Both ways. Here. If we do that basic, like, backdash. We just do the basic backdash here. Things. You know. Bang added another option. But you're still not getting fucked up. You're avoiding his launching down for a three. But um, but the only thing you're not doing here is you're just like blocking his plus one unblock mid. But risk and reward wise, that's fucking fine, man. That's fucking fine. You didn't get launched. You didn't get launched. And... You potentially... Make him, like, whiff his down forward three, which you then can launch. And Feng's only plus one. You know. Of course, that it just all depends on what you want to do, you know? Like... If you feel like he's gonna do either down forward... Let's see, um... Let's see. If you think he's not gonna do the low sweep, you just sidestep. There we go. So, of course, it depends as everything in Tekken 7. But Feng sidestep mix-up, a backdash will get rid of so much of the threat of his sidestep mix. It will get rid of so much of his threat. Because what else could Feng maybe do? This already goes like way further down the rabbit hole. You know? He could... Do sidestep into down back three. That's a good low. You don't love love getting hit by that. Let's see. Definitely don't like getting hit by that. But again, this if you do the back dash low block. Korean backdash beach feng in general. Yeah, uh, like, that's why at extreme high level, me and other feng players, if you guys look back at Evo, you know what Ni was doing, man? How he was beating people? One, two, back four, one, two, back four, down two from time to time, backdash, kempo, you know, like, like you go for with punishes, but like on pressure? It was just one twos, some lows, and back four. That's how he dismantled dudes. 
going for these like big mix-ups against player players that can defend against Fang, which is going to be you at home, ladies and gentlemen, against people at home, people that know how to defend against Fang. These big mix-up options just really lose a lot of like positive risk and reward ratio against someone that can move. You know. Um, so that's the basic uh, Feng sight. Uh, that's the basic Feng sidestep um, mix-up. You know, a back dash into block totally fine because honestly uh, a back dash into like hold back is totally fine you can go a bit higher if you feel more comfortable you can do a back dash into low block but also honestly you know if you don't do that if you just stay at la layer one it's not the end of the world just getting hit by down back three it's not the end of the world 14 damage not great mind me but I probably recommend just practicing, just doing a back dash, low block. Of course, this is just one example. This is just one example of Fang applying his sidestep mix up. You know, it's off of while standing one. The reason I went for while standing one is because we're all talking. We're talking about like back dashing out of his pressure. While standing one leaves Fang point blank. You know, I could have also done one three, where Fang's plus six, but. He definitely does not get a potent sidestep mix-up off of 1-3. Like, he has better frames, but look at that distance. But you eat sidestep 1 plus 2 with low block. Yep. You do. You do. There... There is... But... A lot of people want one size fits all defense in Tekken like if I do this one thing it beats everything that's just not how Tekken works that's just not how Tekken works you know um but you know what am I trying to say but you don't get launched you might be able to launch him like like you avoid his down four three which you can launch you low block and launch his sidestep 4 or his down back 3, which you can launch as well. So risk and reward wise, Feng is at a far higher risk. Or, you know, and that's why that's why Tekken is so hard. You gotta like, so many decisions to be made. As I showed earlier, let's see. There we go, we have that. I'm trying to, you know, as I showed earlier, if you think one of those mids comes in, you always have to make decisions. You can't defend against everything. Very few times can you defend against absolutely every single option, because Tekken just has too many options. There. You just sidestep, and you beat down forward three, and you beat sidestep one plus two. But as I said, you don't have to do backdash low block, you know? If you just do backdash hold back, What's the worst that's going to happen? Fangs plus one. Fangs minus seven. What's the worst that's going to happen? You know? So it just depends on how much of a risk you're willing to take on defense. You know? But then, again, if you add sidestep four here, we're just holding back. Wow. Fang did a launch on block low. To do 14 damage and be negative two, you know. So, if you just back up, maybe you eat a down back three. That's about all that will reach, which is a very small amount of damage versus losing half health from getting clean hit besides step four. Exactly, exactly. So, the main point. I'm great question, by the way, uh, Nick Kelly. I'm uh, sorry if it's not a grumpy in answering that. I really didn't mean to. Um, really didn't mean to. Tekken, there are very, very few one-size-fit-all options. The only other one-size-fit-all option I, I can think of, like with this basic flowchart, is Akuma EXDP. 
EXTP is going to beat everything, but also, you know, we're talking about Akuma using a launch on block move that's also not a Tekken move, you know? In Tekken, you know, that's why labbing is important and knowing your options is so important. But I think I've spent enough time on the sidestep mix-up go down the rabbit hole forever but the basic recommendation is a single backdash that's the basic recommendation single backdash will get you out of so much trouble the risk and reward wise will be totally fine um if you want to go a little bit harder but for more reward backdash low block and you'll be able to um, you know, depending on Feng's options, you'll be able to launch many of Feng's options. So, Snake Dash, just Feng just does quarter circle forward, and he's smoothing. He's smoothing. Look how much distance. Of course, like a wave dash, he can cancel it, kind of like to fuck you up, you know. And that's officially why it's called Snake Dash. This is just, like, a crouch dash, but if you do the up motion to cancel it, to cancel the motion, that's when it becomes a Snake Dash. But that's just, like, semantics, you know. Right now, I'll just probably use the term Snake Dash and Crouch Dash interchangeable. Um, it doesn't really matter for, like, for you how to fight, how you fight against it. Um, of course, actually... The most common thing, the com uh, the most beginner layer for Feng with Crouch Dash is to do the Crouch Dash quarter circle moves. He has a lot of options out of Snake Dash. Quarter circle moves is quarter circle forward one, the low. Minus 14 on block. Quarter circle forward two. Minus 14 on block launcher. Quarter circle forward one also. This is where it gets good. On counter hits. That's where it gets really good. You know, 68 damage. No rage. You can do while standing 4 off of this. You can do while standing 3 off of this. Honestly, if Feng wants to go for a launching option, see the difference in the damage. While standing 2. 22 damage. Uh, sorry, sorry. QCF2. QCF. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Getting ahead of myself. QCF2 is 22 damage, but Fangs while standing 3 is 20 damage, and it's minus 12 on block versus minus 14. So, you'll probably see this more often than not. But those are his actual, like, quarter circle forward moves. Quarter circle forward 1 for the low. Plus two on hit, but look at that pushback. Fang can't really get pressure off of that. It's just, the main usage is just, it's chunky. It's a head and shoulder. You cannot low parry this. You cannot low parry QCF1. Don't try to low parry it. You cannot. He just puts his whole Feng Usi into this. It's like an elbow. You cannot low parry this. And then, of course, as I said, speaking about his QCF moves, QCF2 for a launcher. But, you know, Snake Dash for him, Crouch Dash, it's just a method of closing the distance. A method to make your opponents kind of, like, uh, worried. They're like, what, the what is he doing? What is he? Oh, what what's this guy doing? Oh, what's he doing? What's he doing? You know? And of course, you can approach and potentially go under highs, depending if they throw out highs. You can if you're geese. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, as I said, most Feng beginners, they just do the quarter circle forward moves. But what Feng can also do, actually, he goes into this... See my, my motion here? It doesn't have to be quarter circle forward. It can be down forward down forward let's see you have to do it you know not mega fast 
and he goes into the same big step forward and down. And this is where things get more complicated. Bang can do while standing moves out of this. It doesn't have to be those um, big committal QCF1, QCF2. He can just do a while standing one. 13 frame, approaching mid. And you can just do while standing two, which is rare. I'm really not a fan of this move. It's a counter hit launcher, but it has negative range. And see, <laughs> sometimes getting the combo off of it is very, very annoying. Like, but it's a counter hit launcher mid safe unlock, you know. So it's a thing. But Feng's most common option out of you know safe mids. By far out of this motion is whilst anyone. But one of Feng's most common options out of this, I basically like to call it like a half screen down forward one, is whilst anyone. That's probably the most common option. Sometimes you see while standing four, it's a bit faster, a bit better on hit, a bit more damage on hit. But the primary benefit of while standing four on block is the pushback. That's the main benefit. Because with this weird pushback at minus seven on block, that's when Fang can start doing like a lot of evasive stuff. Plastic Spork, he did say the best way to hedge against Snake Dash is to sidestep left block and try to react to low shoulder if he does it. Um. So we'll get to that momentarily. That That is a very good way. I, I've seen him like really um, do a lot of work against me using that tactic. But thing is, while standing one, it is just good range, goes far. Thanks to this like tr transition, you know, this crouch dash, it goes under highs from time to time. It's minus one on block. go and then he um a sneaky thing about while standing one is its follow-up while standing one two while standing one on its own is very steppable let's have fang do this very steppable see that side step left So, you know, that's cool. That's cool. While standing one, but it has a follow up. While standing one, two. The second hit of while standing one, two, so the two, that basically gives it homing properties. Straight up. Every time I try to catch people stepping, I go for while standing one two, and I've never seen anyone avoid it. Yeah, let's see. See, I'm walking. I'm walking here. I'm walking. I avoid the first hit. Let's avoid the first hit. But then the second hit. Second hit will still hit you, of course. And it's natural. But of course, that's where you do sidestep left block. Minus 10. We'll talk more about while standing one in general. So that's where Plastic Sporks sidestep left block comes into play. Um, because a lot of things you can avoid with bang. Oh, jeez, I forgot about... QCF 1 plus 2, sorry. <laughs> QCF 1 plus 2 is his other QCF option. Which is plus some block mid. It tracks both sides, yeah, I'll show you. The second hit just kind of like Fang's just like, hey, fuck you. Let's try to avoid the... Oh. Let's try to avoid the first hit. Oh, okay. Great question to Kellyum. 
So that brings us in a pretty interesting choice. It's easy to step while standing one to the left, but then the second hit tracks that side as well. But, a, but it's a little bit harder, still possible, it's a little bit harder to step while standing one to the right, but the second hit does not track that way. So, kind of depends on what you want to do. I would just go sidestep left block, because it's easier. But if you want to avoid both... There we go. And then you just... so... That's while standing 1 and 1-2. One, so it's a bit easier to do sidestep left block. But if you want to, like, avoid both hits you do while standing one two ah uh, you, you you do uh a sidewalk right and you'll like avoid both here's another wrinkle well let's just put while standing one and its follow-ups on the back burner just for a second just remember while standing one it still exists but let's just put that on the back burner what fan can also do out of crouch dash qcf one plus two plus some block mid Plus four leashing crotch. This one is. Steppable as well. Very steppable as well. Can you step it both ways? You can step it both ways. Usually. It's kind of hard because Tekken is such a complicated game, so I'm, I'm trying not to create any rules here. That's the main thing, chat. Nothing is guaranteed in this game in defense. If you played this game for a while, nothing's guaranteed. People can change their timings. People have 10 million different options. So I was about to say, usually from far range, Fangs don't do the headbutt, but they can. But it's linear both ways. Let's go back to while standing 1 2. It has a third follow up, right? The follow up that's minus 12 on block. There we go. You can do the third hit afterwards. Minus 12 on block. And check this out. Um. There we go. Fang can delay it, but right now I have no delay. See that? We tried to punish while standing 1-2 because it's minus 10 on block. He counter hits you if he doesn't delay. It's a whole mind game Fang can play. Of course, if he delays, then you do get the punish and that sort of stuff. So it's like a mind game between the two players. Um, let's see, but the third hit is very, the third hit, let's see, I'm trying to like, put this to words. gonna try to sidewalk right oh yeah and the third hit you see <laughs> so okay this is what I this is what I was trying to say the third hit actually has an awful hitbox it really has an awful hitbox it doesn't really go very far so that the basic mind game of while standing one two one is are you going to punish while standing one two first of all it's minus ten it's always minus 10. Are you going to punish? If you are going to punish, Fang might get the counter hit while standing 1-2-1. One, one. It gets kind of complex, and this is just while standing 1. Oh, jeez. Gets a guaranteed shoulder. 
for max range, it can be a bit challenging to get the shoulder. But it's not that hard. It gets a guaranteed shoulder for 50 damage in total. So that's the main... That's the main, like... Simple mind game. Sometimes Fang players, as I said, they like to delay the last hits a little bit. If they delay the last hit, they open themselves up for a bit more. Hey, okay, I got this. If they delay the last hit, you can step in between again. Between the second and third. And if they do that, you really mess them up. It's up to you to catch on Fang's... The Fang player's tendencies. But the delay is a bit more rare. The delay is a bit more rare. Sometimes you can even backdash the third hit. If he delays it. Yeah. Yeah. Check this. Sidestep left block and then backdash let's put it all together or sidestep there you go it has a very bad hitbox on the last hit it doesn't take a lot if he delays the third hit to either backdash it or sidestep it. Really doesn't take that much movement to make a whiff. Wanna do it one more time. There we go. So that's the basic mind game of all standing one two one. That that's kind of a more advanced mind game, excuse me. The basic one is am I going to punish it his minus ten two hits? Or will I not? So keep track of Feng's tendencies with that. Um, and then of course... The next basic level of um, dealing with Snake Dash... There's just so many options. You know? Uh, there's so many options, which is... Hard to just have a one-size-fit-all, of course. Sometimes Feng players, they just like to... Snake dash over and over and over and over, or they like to delay their snake dash because it gives a better tracking properties. And then if you catch on to that, just hop kick his ass, dude. Just launch and just hit him with a down four or two, you know, if they're being too too cocky. Um, but what Plastic Spork was saying, another option is you can build off of the sidestep left and just pay attention to see if he goes for a QCF1. If he goes for a QCF1, then you block that. Don't low parry it unless you geese. He also has a sound effect. If you practice it, it is quite seeable. But again, it's a lot of different options. I primarily like to pay attention to the sound effect. But it is a very noticeable. There we go. It's a very noticeable low. A very unique animation because it's blocking lows is not just like the speed of the low. It's also the animation of the low. You know, because there's some lows in the game that are like the whole animation takes 25. For, like uh, Jin's Hell Sweep, for example. The whole animation takes like 24 frames to play out or something like that, and you're like, oh, that's really slow. But if most of Jin's animation of his hell sweep is him just standing straight up, and it's like the last 10 frames is when he goes into the sweep. And so it kind of depends on the animations of what move, but Feng's low shoulder QCF1 is pretty unique looking. So anything... So uh, that's not incredibly satisfying. There is no one size fits all solution to Feng Snake Dash. There just isn't because there's just too many options. 
there just isn't. But sidestep left block is probably the most solid bet. You know? Probably the most solid bet. Um, there's just too many options that Feng has out of it. Um, and it's really one of those things. It's very little cookie cutter about it. And it's very much like see what your opponent likes to do out of snake dash. It's peak that. Uh, so, yeah. That was a bit of a detour to snake dashing. If you guys have more questions about particular things with that, I can I can answer those.